So, you know, we have a lot of patients who come in and, and you know, people eat quote unquote bad food for different reasons. You know, they, they eat it because whatever, they're raised eating it, they like the taste, they like, so there are a lot of reasons why. And so cheese is one, or dairy products in general, cheese specifically, uh, tend to be one that, that's a little bit more difficult to get rid of than others. And, and so you may ask, well, why? I mean, cheese, you know, it smells like dirty socks and tastes about the same. And so why do people love cheese? Um, part of it may be the fact that, you know, there's a, an addictive aspect. There's an addiction of all of these foods. And so, you know, cheese stimulate uh, certain receptors in the brain, similar to what heroin stimulates. And so it has a morphine-like effect. And so that's a component that underscores the cheese love or addiction. So one thing I try to do is make my patients aware. I mean, okay, you love cheese, you have to have, okay, that's great, you love it. But let's look at this, let's look at the facts. This, you know, so I try to inspire them intellectually in terms of, okay, here's the deal with cheese, it's causing this effect, you have to have it because of this reason. Now that we know what we're dealing with, now we can approach it. So you don't love cheese because cheese is great, because cheese does love you. It's a one-way relationship. Uh, so what we do, try to do is then say, okay, let's try to detox your system. Uh, and we take them through a raw detox and cleanse. And the benefit of a detox, even though for some people it's a struggle, the benefit of a detox, it helps change your taste buds. So many foods that you crave, at the end of the detox, you may lose a craving for many foods that you crave. May not be for everything, but many foods. And so sometimes cheese may be one of those foods that drop off your craving. And we've had people who are cheese lovers, and on raw detox, they find other foods because you could have something with fat in it. Maybe you have an avocado. Uh, maybe you can use nutritional yeast with an avocado and mimic the cheese taste. There are different ways of mimicking the cheese taste so where you're not consuming the animal protein component, but you're consuming a whole plant food, whole plant-based food that can mimic cheese taste. So there are many different ways of doing this. First of all, cleanse the system out, uh, change the biochemistry, change your taste buds, and then that makes it easier to relinquish some of the bad foods. And then other measures will, will help you know, take that process over time. The thing is that the omega-3 oils, you can get omega-3 uh, uh, nutrients from plant foods, so that's number one. The fish gets their omega-3 from plants, so humans can too. There's a big fallacy with, you know, oh, if I eat chicken and fish, it's healthier than pork and beef. It's all, the, the logic there is almost the same as that if I eat cows that are named Sally, it's healthier than cows that are named Bob. I mean, yes, it's a different animal, but by and large, it's a different foreign substance. You know, cows are bad for human consumption because they're animal proteins. Humans are not designed to eat animal proteins. They're not designed to eat other humans. They're not designed to eat cows. They're not designed to eat animals of any type. We're designed to consume plant foods. And so that's the problem with any animal food is that it's not ideal for human consumption. The biochemical molecules that are associated with beef as well as associated with, with cholesterol that's in, in, in eggs, associated with fish molecules, these molecules have an adverse effect on the human frame, triggers inflammation, and so all of these foods are bad.